we proclaim not one, but two comings of Jesus. And this season of Advent is a time where we look forward and remember that he's come among us in swaddling cloths, but that he's also coming again with great glory, with a triumph to, to renew heaven and earth. And a year ago, uh, last um, Advent, this time in, in the fall, a surprising um, thing happened, and an idea emerged, and it was to go to up to Madison, just south of Madison, and, and have a Christmas Eve service in a barn. And I want to give you a background of how we ended up in this surprising service in a barn that no one was expecting. Uh, Jens, if Jens could, could uh, stand up, he's, a, he's the lay pastor catechist with Northwestern students on the campus, of which we have um, a number of students, and they were on retreat up at his family farm. And we'd been going up on retreat there um, for a period of time. And at the close of the retreats, the students would gather for prayer and a, and a service, and then they said, well, let's invite the local people in the community to come. And so the local people came in at the retreat. So, so at the end of the service, everybody was, was, was milling around and said, why don't we have a Christmas Eve service in the barn? There's some precedent for that. And so we were all sort of caught by surprise with the thought of, uh, of, of having this service in the barn. And so, so um, they went back. Now, these are Northwestern students that um, have a, a, a congregation on the campus of Northwestern. And it's made of um, stu students. I've been the ordained pastor connected with them as it began with um, Mike Niebauer and Allie, if you guys could stand up. Uh, Mike was a student at Northwestern when we began, and he's... Um, and he's now married to um, Allie, who graduated here from, from Wheaton. And so we, um, and, uh, these are all full of divine encounters, surprises, how we entered uh, into Northwestern campus, but we're, we, we got in the psychology building and have services with, with students of the campus. And then from there, other congregations were started as the students went out, and then they drew other young people, other young leaders in Albany Park, uh, Logan Square at a pizzeria, uh, and also into a nursing home. Now, these are all students or recent grads, and now from different um, colleges. Uh, we have um, here U of I represented um, with Ryan and uh, John, the University of Western Washington. Here, right? and uh, um, so so they they had gotten used to going different places. And having these divine encounter moments where the kingdom of God is hand in raising up congregations. And so it was in this context that this idea emerged. So um, I remember with Anne and I had a, some, we had our children. We were driving up on a cold uh, winter day to Madison for a Christmas Eve service. And uh, uh, our, it was not a very happy camper ride up there because it, we were breaking all traditions you know we were you know christmas eve that's where we're supposed to be around the family tree at home and so we're going up there and then the question was how many people do you think are going to be at the service and so uh, it was about pretty grumpy and people were saying well I, it's going to be 10 and then uh, another child said uh, 20 and of course i said 40 and everyone uh, knows that that i'm the pastor that's always thinking there's going to be more people than there ever really is, right? So we get up there, we're driving up there, we go in, we, we get, we see the barn, and then we get into the service itself, and everybody at the service was totally surprised because you looked around, and there were over a hundred people that had come to the barn for Christmas Eve. And we were all wondering where they came from, and how they actually got there. And I remember overhearing people talking about the, the way they've been invited, and basically they were saying things like this. Well, yeah, we came, and, and, and many of the people there have been totally disconnected from church. They weren't going anywhere to church. We came, and the invitation went something like this. Come with us. This is church, but it's not really church. It's in a barn. <laughs> and, uh, and so and people gathered. 
And we, we sat on bales of hay and we had a, 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 a service and, and we talked about Jesus coming. And these are all farmers and, 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 and they're practical people. And it was, uh, uh, we, we talked about what it means that the Son of God has come. And it was a powerful moment. And the Lord was with us. And we were all caught by surprise. Now since then, uh, Jens has been going up and there's continue to be gatherings and now there's once a month gathering in the barn and it's going to get weekly and there's a, a group of people worshiping God through this barn. Now when Jesus taught us, the, his followers, he taught very clearly that there's another coming He's coming again. And that concerning that day, that hour, no one knows, not even the angels, nor the Son, but only the Father, and that we will all be surprised, just like we were surprised the way he first came. We didn't expect him to come the way he actually did. We looked back and we saw how the prophecies were met, but he, he surprised us, and he's told us he's going to surprise us again. And he then teaches us to stay awake, for we do not know when the master of the house will come in evening or at midnight. Stay awake, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And as um, uh, Dr. Allison read in Corinthians, Paul writes of this mystery in different places in the epistles. And he says, this is the mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the trumpet sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed, transformed, because our mortal bodies will take on immortality just as a, as a perishable seed dies and goes to the ground, it will rise imperishable, and we will have a new body. We will have eternal life. So that our hope is not grounded, your hope is not grounded in the circumstances of your life which are variable and they rise and they fall. And it, your, your hope is in this resurrection of the dead. Your hope is in the coming again of our Lord Jesus Christ to restore all things to himself. That the story of your life has a plot line. And the plot line goes beyond the grave and into eternity. And that's why your life has meaning and purpose and valor because of this eternal plot line that the second coming of Jesus is looking towards for all of us here. Death is swallowed up and there is victory in Jesus. That your labor, in the vein, your labor here on earth is not in vain because he is coming again. And we'll take all of our, your life and our story into his story. But it will surprise you. You actually don't know how to figure it out. It's a mystery. And so what Jesus says is be ready. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. Be ready and when we are looking up to him and we are saying with the, um, the, 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 at the close of book of Revelation, we hear the testimony, surely I am coming soon. This is how the, the scriptures close. Amen, come Lord Jesus is the response that he's coming soon. As, then as we look up to him and as we look up to his coming again in this day, we can be awake because he can come today. He can come today and surprise us. And that this day and all of our days are full of divine encounters. Just as all of those congregations began with divine encounters and people meeting other people, inviting into a relationship with the Lord, all of the people that you meet in this day are filled with the possibilities of the kingdom of God when the kingdom of God is present. 
So I, I want to encourage you in this season of Advent to enter into a prayer which I have uh, been, been doing in Advent and I've, I, I found it very helpful because it, t it takes a, an orientation because all of us, we're pretty caught up in our worlds, aren't we? We're caught up in our problems and the difficulties and, and the things that are right in front of us. And so Advent is a time where we remember to look up and we open our hands. The kingdom of God is at hand. Come, Lord Jesus. That's the end of Revelation. Come, Lord Jesus. So that we would be awake today. We would be awake for his coming and we would be awake for all the divine encounter that he has in store in this day. All that he has in mind for you. All of the surprises that he has for you today. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. It's present. He has come and he's coming again. And your life, my life, all of our lives together are in that divine truth. So can we say together with uh, John at the end of Revelation, he says that Jesus is coming quickly. Can we say today and open our hearts and rise throughout Advent, opening our hearts, our souls, our hands, and say, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And let him surprise you today.